Well, Senator Kelly Loeffler and her husband, chairman and CEO of NICE owner Intercontinental Exchange, Jeffrey Sprecher, coming under scrutiny for selling off shares before the pandemic started. But New York Stock Exchange floor traders are frustrated with this husband and wife duo for a whole different reason. Let's bring in Charlie Gasparino. He's got the scoop. Charlie, what's going on? Well, we should point out there were two separate bunches of stock sales. There was Leffler's own stock sales where she sold on behalf of her and her husband pretty early on, which looked bad, really bad, but not insider trading. There was Sprecher's own stock sales of his, of his own stock, ICE, the Intercontinental Exchange, which owns the New York Stock Exchange, which I believe was much later, sometime in March. That's when the sale date was printed, uh, which cl clearly not insider trading, but clearly looks bad. I, I will say this. There are business models that come under intense scrutiny and pressure when um, when you have a market collapse like this. Uh, SoftBank is one, as you see it right now, unloading gas assets. The New York Stock Exchange is kind of coming under another type of pressure. And this is what's going to be, I guess, we're going to be talking about for a while. Because a lot of people say, if anything, what the New York Stock Exchange did was expose the fact that the floor of the stock exchange was put at risk when it didn't need to have to be put at risk. That, you know, people knew there was an issue going back with the spread of this virus for for, for weeks. Uh, they, you know, clearly people were scared about this, yet the floor, yet, yet management, namely Sprecher and and uh, and Kelly uh, and, and, and Miss and Stacey Cunningham and Kelly Loeffler, as you know, was not in management at that point. She's a senator from from Georgia. Uh, they kind of rolled the dice on this to keep the floor open when it really didn't need to have have to be open. So I think what we're seeing out of this is immense criticism from the floor, from floor brokers who are saying these guys put us in, in harm's way. And even I think different than that and maybe worse for the New York Stock Exchange and its business model, there's a real debate now going on whether the floor is needed at all. Uh, as you know, members have gone, up, gone on to say we did a story about how Doug Sifu, uh, uh, the CEO of Virtu, which is a key partner of the New York Stock Exchange, said the floor is essentially a TV studio. So I think there's going to be a debate about the floor, whether they need it. And if there's a real debate about the floor, the New York Stock Exchange doesn't lose an edge in pricing stocks. It still, you know, still has the electronic thing. Uh, where it's going to lose its edge is in marketing. If they don't have the floor, it's going to be hard to charge four or five times as much as they do for a listing fee because part of the drama of the day, and it's televised drama, as you know, we're there. CNBC has a huge operation there. Other people have, have huge operations. Uh, is this sort of is this drama on the floor, which really isn't much drama. It's you know the real trading is occurring electronically. It's occurring at hedge funds. It's not occurring with the few pe the people that are left on the floor. And I I think there's uh, with support staff and everything. It's probably under 500. It was many times that during its heyday. So I think that's the problem the New York Stock Exchange has. All these stock sales, they're not illegal. They look bad. It's and they're gonna people are gonna start questioning why they need the floor. You know, at all when they should have when they should have shut it down a, a while back. So mm -hmm. that's the problem the New York Stock Exchange has. They, we've asked them for a comment that they merely pointed out that Mr. Sprecher and and Kelly Loeffler, you know, uh, or Mr. Sprecher in particular, he's the uh, he's the executive, he's the chairman of the New York Stock Exchange and and the head of ICE. That you know what he did was completely appropriate, all true. I don't believe it's violating law. But their, their their business model is coming under a lot of pressure and will will be coming under pressure. People doubt. I will say this. I talked to a lot of Wall Street execs. They doubt the floor will ever open again. We'll see if that happens. Oh. Uh, we should make one more point here uh, okay. before I go. Um, okay. the, Mike Bloomberg, and you know, as we as we were first to report, was shutting his campaign down. Essentially, he initially said he'd keep it going through the primaries and maybe even to defeat Donald Trump. 20. He's essentially folding it into the DNC. Uh, came under some criticism because people are wondering, am I going to get a paycheck now? Am I going to get my, my health insurance now? Uh, Lydia Moynihan, my producer, came across a memo which just was issued that Bloomberg is going to extend to his campaign staffers, people that are you know may lose their jobs, is going to extend health benefits through April. At least oh, that's, that's what good. the memo said. So he's joining others that are trying to take care of employees as uh, we as we get through this stuff. I love By it. the way, I need a good point, news, Charlie. We should point out that we, we yeah. should we, we should point out that April is not exactly that far away. I mean, if you no, listen no. to Tony Fauci, it's uh, this thing could go on for, for beyond April. Yeah. Anyway, back yeah. to you. Charlie Gasparino, good to see you, sir. Thank you, Charlie.